Well, we got a big news item to get to on the first day of Browns minicamp as Cleveland announced their two starting kick returners. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to talk about Amari Cooper, but we will get to some other notes from minicamp later on in today's video. But of course, the headlines are being dominated by the Browns wide receiver who was not at the mandatory minicamp practice. And we're going to go through what that means and what the next steps are and what I think is ultimately going to happen. Now, we've got plenty of updates coming over the next few days, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel. I don't want you to miss out on Amari Cooper returning, hopefully for mandatory minicamp or signing a contract extension, and you won't when you're subscribed. So join nearly 35,000 strong here at the Cleveland Browns Report. But the big news item coming from mandatory minicamp, in my eyes, is the Amari Cooper holdout because... It's official now. He was not at voluntary OTAs, but it's just that voluntary. There are a lot of veterans who weren't there. It didn't gain a lot of traction or attention in the news. But when it comes to mandatory minicamp, anyone that's not in attendance is going to get some attention. So Cooper is entering the final year of that five-year $100 million contract that he signed with the Dallas Cowboys. When he came over to Cleveland, it had three years left on that contract, and the Browns fulfilled, and, and Cooper, 2022, 2023, and now we enter 2024, where he is set to make $20 million in cash with a $23 million cap hit. Cooper is going to turn 30 years old in a few days in the middle of June, and when you look at the highest paid wide receivers in football, I don't believe Cooper is trying to get into the top 10. I think Cooper is uh, pretty well understanding that that's usually a list that belongs to the younger players in the league, the up and coming guys, the guys who are coming off their first rookie contract. And Cooper knows he is not in that territory anymore. But I do think he wants to see a bump from 20th overall in highest paid wide receivers per year. My guess is he probably wants to get towards the Stefan Diggs territory, right? He just saw Calvin Ridley get a contract getting paid $23 million a season. And Calvin Ridley is only a few months younger than Amari Cooper. So I think Amari Cooper is looking to get up from 20 to probably somewhere in that 13 to 15-ish range. Or more importantly, he's just looking for more years added to his deal. He's entering the final year of his contract. Uh, Brad Stainbrook from the Orange and Brown Report said that Cooper is looking for a contract extension. And you can see where Cooper comes from. He's got some decent leverage. Last year, he ranked 10th in receiving yards. However, he is the 20th highest paid wide receiver on an average salary basis. So the math ain't mathin' from Amari Cooper's end, right? He's 10th in yards, but he's 20th in pay. He knows that you're not always going to line up perfectly where the highest paid wide receiver or the number one receiver in yards, the number one receiver in payment. It's not always going to be a perfect match, but 10 to 20 is a little bit of a disparity that he's probably not comfortable with. And then, like I just said, he's looking for some more long-term guarantee. He has been awesome the last two seasons in Cleveland. Back-to-back 1,000 -back receiving yard seasons. He's the first receiver in Browns history to accomplish that feat. 14 total touchdowns. Now, I do want to add that there is a 0% chance of a trade. I'm really just saying this to Cowboys fans that are quietly watching this video on the bathroom stall hoping maybe the Cowboys can reacquire Amari Cooper. No, Tom Downey. That's not happening. There is a 0.000% chance that Amari Cooper gets traded, and there's even less of a chance that he gets cut or released because of this holdout. I personally would extend Amari Cooper. There are some risks. There are some pros. There are some cons to it. He's turning 30 years old. Nothing's going to be a guarantee, but I do feel like Amari Cooper has shown us enough that we should believe he has plenty of gas left in the tank and the Browns should pursue a contract extension. Now, I've got more to share on this in just a second, but I do want to get your thoughts down below in the comment section. Would you extend Amari Cooper? Give me a Y for yes. Give me an N for no. I want to know your thoughts on Amari Cooper when it comes to a contract extension. All right, next story item I want to get to is Deshaun Watson because he was throwing at mandatory minicamp today, which we saw a little bit 
over the last few weeks at OTAs, but now we saw a little bit more from Watson, and I'll tell you what I mean in just a second. But summer is here, which means certain parts of you may begin to sweat and then smell, but kick the bad odor to the curb with Mando Whole Body Deodorant. Put it on your pits, package, feet, and beyond for whole body freshness. From the makers of Lumi Deodorant, this game-changing formula is safe for your entire body and knocks out odor like a champ. Plus, new customers can get $5 off the starter pack when you use code CHAT at shopmando.com. I put all that information in the comments and description of today's video. Now, this starter pack is perfect for new customers becomes, because it comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like mini body wash or deodorant wipes, and free shipping. Luckily, I've got a discount code to help the dog pound out. Get started today and get $5 off that starter pack with our exclusive code CHAT. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you use code CHAT at shopmando.com. I put all that information in the comments and description of today's video. Let's talk about Deshaun Watson. So he threw the football, which it's kind of weird that we got to say those words, but that's kind of the update as we get past this uh, rehab from his shoulder surgery back in November. But he was throwing during seven on sevens, and that's an improvement from where he was a few weeks ago during OTAs because the few times the media was able to watch him throw during organized team activities, Watson was throwing against Casper the Ghost defense. Like, there was no defenders out there. It was just some drills and quarterback workouts and things like that. This time, we saw Watson throw during seven-on-sevens with an actual defense in front of him. Now, he did not seem to have an issue with the velocity on his passes. They were not all perfect passes. I saw one uh, kind of get over the hands and the head of David Njoku during a red zone drill. Martin Emerson probably should have had a pick six or for sure an interception. But we did see some good stuff from Deshaun Watson when it comes to the velocity on his passes. And that was probably my biggest concern coming off a shoulder injury to your throwing arm will you still have the same zip yeah Watson looks like he still has that same zip and that same fastball unfortunately Watson did not throw during 11 on 11s but he continues to ramp up from every single stage of this rehab process overall just really encouraging stuff from Deshaun Watson underwent shoulder surgery in November we're about six months away removed from that shoulder surgery six and a half months give or take and he's already throwing during seven on sevens. We're seeing a lot of quarterbacks come from come back from you know right arm injuries. Joe Burrow, Anthony Richardson, Deshaun Watson, and one of those three quarterbacks was throwing lefty last week. The other one has been in and out a lot more frequently than Deshaun Watson at OTAs and training camp or and mini camp. And now we've got Watson throwing during seven on seven. So overall, I'm very encouraged by the progress that Watson has made you can look at the timeline from when he underwent surgery back on November 21st to the first day of OTAs May 21st he was throwing June 11th he's throwing at minicamp he will continue to alternate days at minicamp in terms of throwing and not throwing but it's basically just today and on Thursday because minicamp is only three days long if the Browns even hold all three days of minicamp some other notes I want to get to coming out of day one for minicamp. Ken Dorsey was calling plays. Kevin Stefanski refuses to give an update or give a committal answer as to whether or not Dorsey or Stefanski will call plays. They said that they are alternating play calling duties during OTAs, and I suspect we see the same during minicamp. But I think Kevin Stefanski is still just trying to keep you know things close to the vest and not tip the Dallas Cowboys and the rest of the opponents off as to who they can expect to make the play call and what kind of play calls can be made based on Dorsey's history versus Stefanski's history as a play caller. So as for Deshaun Watson, he did not have Jerry Judy or Amari Cooper out there to throw to. Judy was inside working with a minor injury. Stefanski did not get more detail than that, but he didn't sound concerned, so I'm not going to be concerned. So no Amari Cooper, no Jerry Judy, top two wide receivers for Deshaun Watson not on the field during 7-on-7's seven seven minicamp. Third story uh, item I want to get to before we get you guys on out of here, some injury notes, some updates. 
We didn't get a very concrete answer at all about Nick Chubb. He was working on the side along with seven other players that were spotted during minicamp. Naheem Hines, that's no surprise. The plan is to get him back for training camp. Jerry Judy was inside working out. No James Prochet. Joel Petonio is just grandfathered into you don't have to work during minicamp and OTAs. So he was working on the side. No Jack Conklin, no Jed Wills, and no Cam Mitchell. Not really sure why on the second-year corner. So the good news is Dewan Jones definitely appears to be back, 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 right, where he's not even working on the side. He does have a bit of a brace on his knee. At least he did during OTAs. I don't know if he had one on today during minicamp, but really encouraging to see Dewan Jones, who's coming off knee surgery, appears to be 100% or as close as possible back to 100%. Bad news is, still working on Jed Wills. Uh, didn't have many high hopes or big expectations for Jack Conklin to come back during the spring. Was hoping we'd see more of Jed Wills, but we did not. However, another piece of good news is, week one is still 12 weeks away. So there's no reason to panic. There's no reason to be concerned at this point about Jed Wills and Jack Conklin in their rehab. When training camp rolls around, if they're not back on the field, that's a different conversation but we're still six weeks away from that happening. So let's let nature and time do its thing before we start reaching for the panic button. Before we get on out of here, just a random question that I want to see some interesting responses from. Which Browns player would you like to go back in time and turn injuries off? Not see them go down whatsoever, and we'll play out their career and see what could have happened. So curious to see what kind of responses we get on this one. Which Browns player would you like to go back in history and turn injuries off for? Um, other notes from minicamp today. Jerome Ford, I told you big news uh, at the beginning of the video, and Pierre Strong were the two primary returners on kick returns as the Browns and all other 31 teams are working on the new kickoff rules. Um, Naheem Hines, I expect, will have a big role in kick returns when he returns, but for now, it's Jerome Ford and Pierre Strong, the two running backs, which I think is a, a good move. When you look at the running back position, that's something that they excel in finding the holes and shooting through them. And with the new kick return rules, no one can move until they touch the football, and they're pretty much right on top of them. So it's no longer about having to gain speed to combat the speed of everyone gaining all the kick, kickoff coverage guys, gaining speed as they run down the field. They're starting from zero at the 40-yard line, so it's just about getting good blocking up ahead and then running through those holes like they normally would at the line of scrimmage. Uh, Dorian Thompson-Robinson was throwing today. That's good to see. He's still working his way back from a hip injury. He suffered in the was it the Bears or the Jets game last year. It's escaping me right now. And then also we got a snippet of kind of the new wave of Browns practices. They have TVs on the sideline. So they can stop practice immediately and do in-practice film review. Jim Schwartz was doing that with the defense. I think that's awesome. I mean, I think this applies to more than just football. But anytime in your career or you know playing a sport, you make a mistake, you want to fix it and correct it immediately. So the next rep, you don't compound that mistake and make another one and start getting in that habit. And then you don't watch the film until you go back inside and you don't get an opportunity to go back on the field and correct it until the next day at practice. Now the Browns can point out mistakes immediately on the fly and correct them during the very next rep at practice. All right, let's bring on Trizzy Trace to pick a card. Mr. Gerard, which card do you want to go with, bud? I'm going to roll with the Seven of Hearts. Seven of Hearts? Okay. I'm going to go for Amari Cooper, hopefully ending the holdout soon and getting a nice extension, whatever he needs to get back on the field because he is, you know, Top three most important player on this offense, I'd say. I'll go with two of spades. Oh, I like that. What'd you say? I said the seven of hearts. No. Six of diamonds. Oh. You were close, though. Closer than me. All right. That's going to do it for us on this edition of the Cleveland Browns Report. We're going to be live, by the way, in a few short hours. So come hang out with us and get more Browns coverage and a Madden simulation for Browns versus Raiders. Mm -hmm.